Hi, and welcome to Old Time Knowledge. Well, I'm continuing in the holiday series today with a recipe that I recently got from my great aunt, Betty. When I went to her house one time, she made these little cookies that they make you think of like lady fingers or wedding cookies or something like that. And anyway, she sent me the recipe and I think it's from a church cookbook or something, but it says snow crescents. So I had to look up snow crescents and apparently snow crescent is an actual thing but it's a Hungarian cookie with almonds. But this recipe doesn't have almonds, it has pecans. So I'm not really sure, I don't wanna confuse anyone and say that this is the same thing as the Hungarian recipe. This is a recipe that would remind you more, like I say, of like, even the Danish wedding cookies that, that they sell in the pink boxes. I think, I can't remember if it's Keebler or what, but wedding cookies, um, lady fingers, things like that. These are great for Christmas time because they look like they're covered in snow. So I, I love the Snow Crescent name, um, but they're also great for weddings, baby showers, really any kind of any kind of any kind of little gathering. So stick with me, and we'll get right to it. All right, y'all. I have never made these before, so you're going to be learning right along with me. First, we've got to get a cup of pecans chopped really finely. My aunt said definitely make sure they're just chopped really fine. This is not one of those things where they can just be a little chopped like they would be in a pecan pie um, because otherwise you're going to have big lumps of pecan in the cookies and these that's not really what these are supposed to be about. These are supposed to be a lighter, um, not, not quite so dense and heavy cookie. I mean they're kind of dense but, but um, the pecans aren't supposed to um, be in big chunks in the cookies. One of these days I'm going to get a food processor. But hey y'all, you know what? This time I'm going to be using my brand new KitchenAid mixer for the first time. My mom gave this to me. Um, my birthday was recently and my mom gave it to me as a birthday present and kind of a Christmas present since they're both in December. And so I am beside myself with excitement. I have wanted one of these for a long time and I'm really looking forward to using it but there might be also a learning curve for me on that because I've been used to using a, a regular old hand mixer. I think that's probably going to be good enough. All right so I'm going to put those aside and now I need to cream together one and a quarter stick of butter with just one quarter cup of powdered sugar. So let me get this repositioned so you can see what I'm doing. All right I should also mention that I've got my oven preheating to 300 degrees. So I'm just going to go ahead and dump the, these pieces of butter in. This is one and one quarter sticks of butter and I've just chopped it up. I'm going to get it on down in there. Okay. Forgive me if y'all already have a KitchenAid and you know how to use yours better than I know how to use mine. Don't laugh at me. We all have to start somewhere. I'm getting a quarter of a cup of powdered sugar. Alrighty, now let me get this turned on. Alright, I'll say that looks pretty well creamed together for me, so now I'm going to add in two cups of flour. Start mixing that. I'm going to add in about a cup of the pecans. Got to add about a tablespoon of vanilla. A tablespoon of ice water. I have never had to add ice water to a recipe before, but there's a first time for everything. I 
Wow, that just really whips it up fast, doesn't it? All right, I think that's got it. All right, now I just need to get these little crescents rolled out and that's gonna be interesting because I've never rolled crescents before, at least not with anything like this. I've done it with just dough that you roll up into a crescent, but this is a little different, so find out how this works. All right. See how that dough looks? It just is all holding together. It's really, really, really kind of tight. So it says that you're just supposed to roll it into like a little shape like that. And then you form it into a little crescent. Oh, that's not so bad. See? But it actually says to do it in like little teaspoon sizes. Let me see if, I guess that's about a teaspoon. Let me see. Oh no, y'all. Oh, this is funny. So if it's like that, that seems awfully small if that's a little teaspoon size, but I guess, I guess I'll try that. Reckon I should put them over here so y'all can see what I'm doing. And these cookies don't have any leavening, so um, I guess they're gonna just be kind of compressed. I guess it's kind of like a Peaky and Sandy's I'm thinking about. These are going to be all different sizes, y'all. I think I'm definitely going to have to learn the rhythm of this. Maybe I just won't make them all into crescents. Maybe I'll just make them into little, little discs like we think of like little wedding cookies because that, that's something I know works. There we go. I think that's what I'm going to do. And then when these come out of the oven, we are going to be dusting them with powdered sugar. And they're going to look so cute. Are y'all able to see how those look? Let me turn this a little bit and zoom in. So now you can actually see what they look like. I'm sure you'd rather see me just putting them here than rolling them out and sticking them across the stove top. I reckon I probably ought to not call these snow crescents. I probably ought to call them snow buttons because that's really what they are more like. They kind of remind me of those big buttons that you see on a winter coat. So that's what I'm gonna call these is snow buttons. So when I upload this video, y'all, you, you'll start watching the video and you'll hear me talking about snow crescents. And then you'll be wondering, where's she getting snow buttons from? But then this, this is the part of the video where you'll find out where the snow button thing came from. I reckon I'll put one more crescent up there at the top just to keep things sort of orderly. And I mean, you saw this only had a quarter of a cup of sugar, and then it's going to only have the sugar that gets dusted on the outside. So these really are not high sugar cookies. So if you're trying to watch how much your sugar intake is, then these might be a good choice. I'm not a physician. Don't take my advice as though it's healthcare advice. It's not. I remember back in the 80s when everybody started figuring out how to make all kinds of desserts low calorie. They would be using sugar-free Jello or sugar-free Jello pudding, sugar-free Cool Whip. Um, things like that. They never taste as good, but we felt like we were doing something back then when we would make those more low calorie things. It was like, well, now I can have twice as much because it was going to have less calories than the, but you're really more satisfied if you just go on and have a regular size portion of the original recipe rather than a double size portion of an inferior recipe. That's the way I see it. That's why, I mean, that's one of the many reasons why I use butter and I will not use margarine or any kind of light version of margarine or butter. First of all, margarine, y'all, is just plastic butter. It's not even real. It's not even real at all. But with, with butter, it's not bad for you if you don't have it in excess. You don't want to eat a whole stick of butter at breakfast. Otherwise, you'll probably be all right. All right, I'm going to get these in the oven and let me see how long I need to bake them. Okay, the recipe says bake them on an ungreased cookie sheet for about 25 minutes at 300 degrees. Do not brown and do not overcook. Roll in confectioner's sugar when cool. 
yields three dozen. So let's see how many do I have here. 16 plus 21. So there's 21 here. So if I get 15 more, that's three dozen. I don't know if I'll get 15 more, but we'll see. Anyway, let me get these in the oven and then I'll bring you back when they're done. All right, so I just got these out of the oven. I have some powdered sugar that I sifted here into this um, little this little dish. And I felt like I wanted to sift it because my powdered sugar was kind of clumped together. So now I'm just gonna roll these hot cookies in the powdered sugar and put them on the plate. I probably put way too much powdered sugar in this dish, y'all. I'm gonna have a lot left over. That's okay, I'll make something else so I can roll in powdered sugar so that it won't go to waste. I'm sure this just takes some perfecting to get everything just exactly right so that they, they look exactly right and all that good stuff. But um, this is how we learn it and that we do, do new things. But I, I'm definitely going to taste one before I end this video because I want to let you know how they are. So I guess like <laughs> it, it occurred to me when they would, these were baking, this is basically just a type of shortbread. I mean, that's really what it comes down to with no leavening. Here I was talking about, oh, there's no baking powder, baking soda. There's, you know, nothing that's going to make these fluff up. And it, I don't know why I didn't even think about it, but it's like butter cookies, shortbread cookies, um, things like that. So anyway, they're going to be good. Um, I love some shortbread. I hadn't made any of them couple years. I might have to make some of that sometime soon too. I'm going to take this one that broke and I'm going to try it and I'm going to let you know how it is. That's good. That's like I remember. I probably could have let these bake just a little bit longer. The recipe said 25 minutes, but remember I've told you before, my oven can be unreliable. And since with these, you're not supposed to let them brown. I guess it's just a sort of trial and error thing to make sure you figure out if you have an unreliable oven like me, how long you actually need to bake them for. I probably could have baked them for 30 minutes and they, they would have been just fine. Um, but they're good, it's, they're, they're definitely good. They're very tasty. And I think on the next batch, I'm just gonna let them cook a little bit longer and see how they do. In fact, I'll report back after I do that. So stick with me. All right, I've gotten the second batch out of the oven. I let these bake for a little over 30 minutes instead of just 25 minutes like I did before. So they definitely feel different. So I wasn't sure, um, they didn't get brown but they definitely feel different. So I guess that's one of those things you just have to go by is feel. They definitely had a little bit of a softer feel the first time. That doesn't mean they felt doughy, but they just didn't feel as done as they do now. I'm just gonna go ahead and put a few of these in this powdered sugar and just do them real quick. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't know if you could roll these when they're not hot. I don't know if they would do better because I've not made these before, but I know with a lot of things you want to roll them in sugar when they're hot because the sugar will stick to them better. And remember how I said earlier that I should get a total of 36 cookies out of this? Well, this second batch, I was only able to get 14 instead of 15, but I still think that's pretty good considering that first batch, I was kind of all over the place with those sizes at the very beginning when I was trying to figure out that crescent shape. And I definitely think I'm going to stick with the... Um, with the little button shape if I make these well when I make these in the future because I know I'll make them again um, but I think I'll stick with the little button shape just because it's easy and that uh, little crescent sh sh shape to me feels like it might be a little more brittle um, it is pretty it's very pretty but um, just for the sake of uh, making things easier and I'm actually gonna get a little bit of this powdered sugar and sift it on top because that will look nice. So I'm just giving it a little dusting. So it's like snow. So there you have it, friends. I'm going to get one of these new ones and taste it and see how it is. Oh, that's much better. 
definitely cooking it just a few minutes more made a big difference. They are, they are much, much, much better. I will say this about these cookies. Um, they're definitely like, if you're looking for a super sweet cookie, this is not it, but it's not, it's not lacking in any sweetness, but this would definitely be a cookie that, um, well, honestly, it's probably going to appeal to the adults more than the kids just because the kids like to have things that are a lot of times really sweet with chocolate chips or, you know, things like that in it. But this is just um, just a good old fashioned, uh, almost shortbread type cookie, ladyfinger uh, wedding cookie type thing. So in any case, I hope you enjoyed this. And if this sounds like something you would like, by all means, make it and let me know what you think. If you have a similar recipe, please tell me in the comments below because I'd love to know it. I'm all about sharing recipes. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Shh, y'all. No sooner had I stopped filming, I finished that one and we'll have another one because these are so good. That was really good. That's so good. It's messy. I probably have powder all over my mouth. I don't even care. Enjoy. See you later.